Welcome to the Daniel Main Podcast. My guest today is James Walter Wesley, football fan, goalkeeper for Methven FC and founder of The Organ Gloves. He's created a brand from scratch, starting out as a small startup out of Canterbury to now selling his goalkeeper gloves all around the world and having multiple professional players wear the brand's gloves. James, welcome to the podcast. Awesome. Thanks very much for having me. It's great to be here. Yeah, it's a pleasure to have you on. Thank you. All right, let's get straight into it. So tell us a little bit about, a little bit about how you got started with football. Well, with football, um, I was probably about six, seven years old. I'd actually started playing rugby um, in the first kind of year or so. Um, and then I used to go around my friend's house and he, he was a couple of years older than me and he wasn't a bad football player. Uh, and he used to just stick me in goal and just hit balls at me and hit balls at me. And I didn't really, you know, know too much about it at the time. I just was kind of stood there and, you know, going around a friend's house and just in, enjoying being there. And then it got to the point that it, was, uh, it wasn't too much fun um, letting in all the goals that were going, you know, were going past me. So I decided, right, I'll make a bit more effort. And, and all of a sudden I started saving a few and I thought, oh, okay, this is... Uh, this is uh, easier than, <laughs> than it looks, let's just say. Um, and I just got better and better um, from there, really. Um, and, uh, yeah, pretty much went from stopping nothing to all of a sudden, you know, diving into the corners and pulling them out. And we probably played together for years and years, maybe from maybe seven or eight till probably 14, 15, we're still kicking the balls about together. Um, and then when I got to about nine years old, <clears throat> I joined a team. Um, which was uh, Stratford United. My my granddad actually lived at the the top of the road of where the football pitch was, and it was a different town to where I lived. Um, but it was a good um, opportunity to go and see my granddad every weekend. So we used to go um, play the games and then go off to my granddad's house afterwards uh, and just chill out for the afternoon. Pretty good fun. Yeah, and tell us a little bit a little bit about your business, Bjorgen Gloves. How did you get started with that? Uh, so Bjorgen Gloves has been around since April of last year. Um, how do we get started? It was basically something that I've wanted to do for years and years, um, especially when I was in the UK. Um, it was kind of a, an itch I just needed to scratch. Um, when I came to New Zealand seven years, six or seven years ago, there wasn't really a huge amount on, on offer from a goalkeeping uh, glove point of view. Um, I reached out to quite a few of the independent brands to see if they needed any reps or anything in New Zealand and uh, nobody got back to me so I thought okay well maybe maybe you know there's something in it to, to look at maybe launching something that um, that kind of you know New, New Zealanders or New Zealand football can, can you know can call their own their own brand and that not have to you know get from overseas you know and, and wait kind of 10 days shipping every time they want a pair of gloves those type of things so um, I kind of thought about it then um, and unfortunately it didn't quite happen straight away um, and then when COVID, the first COVID wave came in, I kind of looked at myself and, you know, you kind of, you don't really know what the, what's going to happen in the world. And you think, oh, you know, maybe, maybe, you know, we're all going to die tomorrow or something. And then I thought to myself, well, you know, what did, what did I always want to do and what haven't I done yet? And, um, and that straight away was, was the top of the list. And I was like, right, I'm just going to go and do it. Um, so, yeah, from that moment, I decided to, didn't really have any money um, saved or anything to start with um, and just kind of, did a little bit at a time and got prototypes in um, and, and just went from there, really. Um, and it's been quite an exciting journey so far. And what was the most challenging part about starting your own business? Um, apart from the, the finance point of view, uh, definitely manufacturing has been has been the hardest bit um, so far. It's um, it's very difficult. Uh, at first, you get kind of absolutely bombarded through messages from Instagram to emails of people wanting to be your manufacturer and um, not all of them are necessarily always legit um, and also you know some of the quality isn't quite necessarily as good as, as they, maybe they believe you know their product is so it's very hard um, working out really who, who to use and, 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 to, and to go from there really. Uh, I had a couple of bad experiences uh, I was trying to make gloves from around about October and I wanted to launch for Christmas but uh, due to a couple of issues with manufacturing uh, we didn't actually get up and running until until pretty much the season started in April. So that was a little bit upsetting, but that's pretty much been the headache from from the, the off. Uh, I feel that I've got it right. I mean, we can always improve on everything. Um, you know, we're still quite a new company, but uh, I, I believe that we, you know, we've got a, a, a very decent product out there at the moment. So um, yeah, we're 
quite happy with, 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 with how it's gone. Yeah, it's definitely a difficult time right now with the whole supply chain issues as well and the shipping delays around the COVID shipping shutdowns. delays. Yeah, it's been it's been an absolute nightmare. I think just for my my new gloves alone, um, it's probably six or seven weeks behind what I you know I expected it to be. Um, it's quite frustrating, and then just shipping from from probably the first time I ordered uh, gloves in is pretty much tripled now. So yeah, the, there's there's extra expense there, which is which is quite frustrating. Um, but uh, you know, we we crack on. We, it's, it's it's the same for everybody at the moment. It's quite frustrating, but you've just kind of just got to get on with it, I guess. Yeah, that's how it is. And what's your vision for the future of Bjorgen Gloves? Uh, so <clears throat> my vision from the start was to to have you know a a, a very you know, a great quality product. Um, in New Zealand, that's um, that we can call our own. You know, it's, we're not getting stuff from, you know, the UK and, and allowing the UK to dictate or Spain or anything like that. It's, you know, a New Zealand, a New Zealand product that we, we're, we're really trying to reach out to the goalkeepers and build a network around New Zealand uh, for Bjorgen. Um, so the kind of vision really for the future is, is to be uh, one of the, you know, one of the um, top suppliers within New Zealand. I mean, that would be my dream. Um, but the, the vision as well is, it's just to grow the business, um, you know, do some some different different stuff as well. We're trying to get some training tops uh, sorted and some padded gear and things at the moment. So just expand the product range um, and just uh, and just build networks really around New Zealand and just really try and look after um, things with sponsorship, grassroots football as well, um, and some of the juniors um, and the academies as well. We're kind of really looking into to helping them if we can. Yeah, that's an awesome mission. I think we really need to build up that that culture of football and supporting our local businesses in New Zealand because I don't think there's enough of that at the moment. Oh, I totally, yeah, I totally agree. And but all I can all I can say so far, the support has been absolutely fantastic. Um, from from pretty much the word word go, really, uh, I've had so many people reaching out to me, and and you know the support has just been phenomenal. Um, so yeah, I definitely can't can't. Um, argue with that it's just been it's been fantastic so far so we were really happy um you know that people have supported local businesses and seen the vision and 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 you know and trying to try and help us grow as, as 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 a kiwi business so yeah it's been it's been fantastic so far yeah and on the subject of support how did it feel to make that first sale for the business um well obviously it was it was it was fantastic i actually made it was like I had maybe six or seven come through at once because I had a, a launch time for the website. So the website was going live at eight o'clock. I was actually working um, at work at the time. I was on a, on a night shift um, sitting on a forklift <laughs> with, my, <laughs> um, with my Instagram open and um, trying to make sure that my website would go live. I was having a little few problems kind of 10, 15 minutes before, but luckily I got it, got it up and running uh, in time. And um, yeah, the, as soon as that kind of eight o'clock hit, um, my phone just went crazy for a couple of minutes, um, you know, and there's this orders coming through, um, and I was kind of almost kind of shouting and screaming to myself, um, but there was no <laughs> one around to to share my um, share my joy. Um, I was just literally in an old, cold, dusty shed on my own, <laughs> um, just having just having a good time really for for the first fifteen twenty minutes. But it was it was yeah it was it was fantastic. I was kind of. Um, relieved as well in a way that you know that somebody had actually you know reached out and actually bought a product because you, you don't know you just you know you think you have all these ideas in your head of how it's going to go uh, and, it, and it was a big relief just to, to actually see orders come through straight away which was which was awesome yeah i can imagine it was a very exciting time um was there any time when you thought that you would quit or stop running the business throughout this journey um <laughs> yeah quite a few times <laughs> to be honest um <laughs> Yeah, and that comes just down to manufacturing and money. Um, like we've never had any like um, investors or anything like that. It's always been from from my wage. Let's just say from the start, I didn't really have any savings. It was kind of a right. Let's just do it. Let's get let's let's crack on with it. So everything was coming out of my wage. So every time I got paid, a little bit more money would come out, and we'd build something else, and then more money would come out, and more money would come out. Um, and then, like I said at the beginning, on in, in October around there, there was a few times when the manufacturing wasn't wasn't correct. Uh, they'd actually messed up my logo, um, which was which was very very frustrating. Um, and I still didn't 
necessarily uh let's just say um get a refund on on the money so then i had to work harder and do extra hours at work to build again and again and again and again and so yeah there's definitely some moments there when i thought about uh you know is this am i doing the right thing is this is this um is this going to work um but yeah but then when you see gloves on people um when you see um uh, just even for an example yesterday i was playing football against against Ferrymead and you know the guy on the other pitch on the other team he's got my gloves on things like, like moments like that to me is just fantastic and you know you're sitting there and have a chat with him afterwards and and he's saying how, how much he's enjoying them like it, it really makes up for like the, 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 the you know the bad moments so um yes i've definitely thought about it um but um i'm not really a quitter i, I just want to keep going it's my dream so i just need to keep keep pushing really yeah that's an awesome mindset to have and i think it's very important for anyone looking to start up their own business as well yeah 100 percent, 100 percent. it's uh when you're starting your own business um i think you just really need to just just plan 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 and and plan for the setbacks because it, sometimes it can demoralize you a little bit but you've just got to keep going and you know you've got to just keep jumping over those those hurdles and and, and, and you'll you'll always get there in the end but it can become quite stressful um uh, but you just got to keep keep plugging away really yeah, let's talk a little bit about the, the state of football in the world right now. And I'm going to ask you, who do you think will win the World Cup this year? It's uh, quite a hard question. Is There's always the, the big boys, you know, the Brazil. I'd like it, obviously, England to win. <laughs> is it going to yeah. happen? Um, I don't know. It never, never really seems to uh, for a long, long time. Um, yeah, I think probably uh, Brazil has got to be up there. Um, and like I said, I think maybe England um would be great like i'd absolutely love that um but you know as as, as an englishman i i think we always get very very excited that that's going to happen and unfortunately it never seems to happen um you know but yeah. that's football yeah that's why it's exciting and um you never know you, you you know you could be the best team in the world but on your day you know something could happen and you you, just, you know you don't perform and you know the underdog can win and that's 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 fantastic so maybe an underdog i'd love an underdog to win we'll see yeah yeah that'd be awesome who do you think is going to win feel, who do i think i think i think france have got another shot this year and brazil yeah. like you said i think they've got some nice players awesome not england <laughs> <laughs> i don't know i think they've got a nice generation of players but just can't seem to get it done in the tournaments right yeah totally agree <laughs> We'll see. <laughs> How'd it feel to see New Zealand being knocked out like that against Costa Rica? Oh, I mean, that's, it was heart, heartbreaking, really. Um, I thought they performed really, really well on the day. Um, but yeah, just uh, just with that and the, with the kind of the VAR bringing it back, and yeah, to me, it didn't seem like there was there was much to it. Um, but um, yeah, having the goal disallowed was. Uh, was was pretty upset, and I thought it was a great, I thought it was a great goal, great finish, and um, yeah. And then as soon as when they said, "Oh, you know, there's, 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 it's um, it's been ruled off you, or chalked off the board," you think, "What was that for?" And then you go back and you go back and you look at it and you think, "Really?" You know, I think it's one of those things. If you yeah. really want to kind of get something scratched off the board, you can look at anything and analyze it enough. You could probably find a problem with any goal, really. But I I didn't really see. It. I thought it was harsh, um, but you know. That's football, and that's you know, with with VAR, you can't really do much about that at the moment, unfortunately. Yeah, for sure. But I th I'm still quite excited about the young generation of players we got coming through in New Zealand. Oh, I think, I think yeah, the I players think have come a long way. I think just even just the grassroots level, like from what I've seen, like I obviously haven't been in the country seven seven years or so. From what I've seen in the last you know six or seven years, has been it's just been positivity, um, you know, academies looking after grassroots and really developing the culture here i think it's it's fantastic and the goalkeepers here at the moment are phenomenal like um you know we've got to be pretty pretty proud of of what's going on behind the scenes to 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 push push the the, the younger generations through the football it's, it's really phenomenal yeah for sure and what club do you support and how do you start supporting them so i am an arsenal fan um how did i start supporting them so my dad was a Chelsea fan, um, and the very first game I'd ever watched 
was Arsenal Chelsea. You know, it was I don't know. It's probably 1990, maybe 1991 or something. I can't remember. But Arsenal beat Chelsea two one that day, and I remember just turning around to my dad and saying, but "They're better than." Your team. <laughs> and I don't know how that kind of came about. And then from that moment, I was only a young kid. Um, I kind of followed Arsenal. Uh, I probably lived what an hour and a half uh, away from Highbury at the time, um, and I tried to get to a couple of games when I can. It was obviously, you know, it's, as it is these days, expensive, and I never think to try and get down there. But we, yeah, we got down to a few games, um, and then just uh, pretty much used to uh, watch as much as I possibly could. But normally, listen to, especially as a kid, listen to it on the radio. I remember, you know, nine, ten years old, um, laying on the floor with my ear pressed up against the the radio, listening to Five Live, um, and just really enjoying the atmosphere of the crowd and everything. Um, and then, if I was lucky enough to go to a friend's house that had Sky, would be watching it, you know, on there or down the pub. So, yeah, yeah, I'm a Chelsea fan myself. So, oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, there <we> go, <laughs> not a bad team. Yeah. And what did it feel like to get your first pair of gloves to a professional footballer? Um, so the first professional football player was the um, was Salva de la Cruz, uh, which was based at the in Spain. Um, he uh, happened to be a friend of a friend. So I reached out to a few people in the UK that I knew that played uh, professional level football and, um, and asked if anybody had any connections with, with any current because uh, obviously I'm getting on a bit now, so I'm 30, 37. So uh, any current goalkeepers that still are still playing, um, and one of my friends reached back to me and said, "Ah, oh, you know, here's four or five different different goalkeepers that that he knows quite reasonably well." So I kind of messaged um, a few of them. A lot of them already had sponsorship, um, and Salva had kind of a part sponsorship, um, and he said, "Oh, send send out a, a prototype, and we'll and we'll take a look." So he, I sent it, sent one over to Spain. And he really enjoyed uh, the Neos Pro glove, um, really enjoyed the roll finger. Messaged me back straight and said, look, I'd love to wear your gloves. Um, you know, let's let's get this sorted. So, um, yeah, I uh, sent, sent some more over and um, he started sending me over some some pictures of, of the team he was playing for. And then it's been on, obviously, on the TV and things like that over there. So as soon as I started seeing that and actually seeing it in a proper game environment on the telly, it was, it was pretty exciting, to be honest. Um, they played... Um, um, Deportivo La Coruña uh, twice this of season, obviously, and um, both times for me that was absolutely ph- phenomenal. Um, they played uh, Elche in um, La Liga as well in the uh, Copa del Rey, which was really really exciting. Uh, I w- tried to watch the the video, but it was so foggy that night you can't really see much, uh, which is upsetting because that was the big moment and um, you can't you can't see the the brand. But that's that's okay. You know, I enjoyed watching the game anyway, and um, he pulled up a couple of good saves. So. Yeah, it was uh, it was really really exciting. I get very very excited when um, when I get you know photos sent to me uh, from professionals that that, have, that have, you know wearing the gloves or worn the gloves. So yeah, it's um, definitely definitely a good moment. Yeah, that's definitely like one of those connections that you wouldn't have had if you didn't have the brand. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, um, it's just it's just it just really makes everything worthwhile you know seeing not just professional keepers like i really enjoy just getting sent photos from from you know grassroots level uh, all the way up to kind of the national league uh, with goalkeepers wearing the gloves to me it's 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 just fantastic and and that's why i, I, I push for, for photos as much as much as i can because i love to see them it's not um a lot of brands go out there and they just you know you only ever see the professional goalkeepers the professional goalkeepers which is great it's great for selling gloves but that's not really what we're, you know, we're obviously trying to sell gloves here, but, but we're trying to build a network as well of New Zealand goalkeepers. So, you know, everybody, um, everyone can join that, that, that network. You know, if you want to send photos in, um, send them in, I'll make sure I feature them uh, for you guys as well. So yeah, I try my best. <laughs> yeah. It's awesome to see every day on the Instagram, on the story. I always see different goalkeepers wearing the gloves. It's really cool to see. Yeah. Yeah. I, I enjoy it. I, um, and, um, I don't always post everything straight away. Um, you know, just with family life and, and things going on, but, uh, definitely within kind of 48 hours, I'll normally try and get every, every, every photo that gets sent out, you know, either on story or, uh, depending on kind of the quality of the photo, uh, it may go on to, um, onto the actual, um, uh, 
the main site as well. So, Yeah, and on the topic of family life, how do you balance that side of things as well as the business? Um, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you speak to my partner, I don't, I don't really. Um, it's quite hard. I work, work full-time anyway, so kind of doing 40, 50 hours uh, a day job. Um, and then when I come home from work, if there's like there's glove orders or personalizations, I pretty much go straight to straight to the office and I get them sorted, do the Instagram, um, reply to any emails, messages, um, and then I will try and box it all off as you know as, as soon as I can. So then I can get back to my kind of daddy duties and having dinner and doing the normal things. Um, but sometimes I'll get late orders come through, and then when everybody goes to bed, I'll go back to the office and then you know I get the late orders. So I I try and get everything out next day. Um, even if I get a personalization late at night, I will still, unless it's like one o'clock in the morning, I'll still try and get it done. Uh, so it goes out the next day. Cause I, I know how important it is to goalkeepers that when you've ordered, you know, you really want your product and you want it for that next game. So I, I try, I try my best to get everything sent out as quickly as possible to people. I don't delay things for two or three days and then do the personalization, uh, which would free my life up a little bit more, but <laughs> um, you know, that's not what, you know, what people want. So I, I, I do my best to, 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 juggle it all um and then like you you're aware of like at weekends as well i play football um in the winter and then in the summer i've also got an ice cream business as well so juggling everything um gets a bit too much sometimes <laughs> i think i need a holiday soon <laughs> that'd be nice yeah i mean i love to see that work ethic and i think the your, the community you're building around that with the company I think I think the fans appreciate that as well. Well, I hope so. I, I do put in um, a lot of effort behind the scenes uh, as much as you know, as much as I can. Um, and um, yeah, I, I hope I hope obviously people just appreciate the product and appreciate what we're trying to build. Um, and I'm, I, I know they do. Like I said, I've had so many people reaching out to me already and it's just saying you're doing you know doing great. You know, well done, keep it up. You know, um, and I really appreciate that. It really kind of makes it worthwhile. Yeah, I think that's really one of the beauties of a small business is that you can really have that bond with the owner, with the creator, as opposed to the big corporations where it's just really a logo, a company. Yeah, a hundred percent. Yeah. And there's, you know, loads of shareholders and things like that. Like this is, you know, it's, it's not just my brand. It's, it's, it's our brand, you know, in New Zealand, um, goalkeepers, you know, it's, it's not, there's no brand unless, you know, people, people want to support the brand. So, um, you know, we, we're just really, really overwhelmed by the support that we've had locally and obviously, you know, around New Zealand. So, um, yeah, all I can really do say is, th is thanks everyone, you know, for that. That's fantastic. Um, and uh, we really appreciate it. And what would be your biggest piece of advice for young people looking to start their own business as well? Uh, plan. Plan, take your time. Um, Create a solid, solid business plan um, with the the ice cream business that we've got. I, I was really, really on it with the business plan and I worked out all my costs and everything and I knew exactly what I wanted to do. Um, and we slowly did it with the Bjorg and I probably rushed it maybe a little bit because, I, because of manufacturing times and I wanted it launched for the, you know, the up and coming season. So I probably rushed through that, um, for the first couple of months. And that's why the, there was manufacturing areas and I lost a bit of money here or there. And, you know, um, but you know, we, we pulled it off by the time the season started and we, and we, we had a, you know, a, a very good product. Um, but, um, I definitely would say, um, plan, don't rush it, um, build up some finances before as well. It's definitely a little bit less stressful if you've got some money behind you, um, and just and just work hard and it will happen. Just just keep working hard and believe in yourself, and you know other people will start believing in you as well. And just um, and and just go for it. If you don't go for it, you know it will, it will never happen. So if you've got an idea uh, and you want to do something, just 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 go for it. But just be smart about it. And just plan and and take your time. Yeah, I think that's a powerful message about just going for it because I think many people have an idea or want to start something, but they always have that doubt that creeps in and that really stops them from trying. Yeah, hundred percent. It is the doubt is that's the horrible thing that you know you're going to make mistakes or it's not going to be this. Or everybody makes mistakes, but as long as you learn from that mistake, 
um, you know, that's that's the thing. You know, I've made plenty of mistakes from 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 word go, but every time I'll never make that mistake again, and I'll never make that mistake again. And um, yeah, and and it's all you know, it's all education. If if we all know how to, you know, run businesses and and, and create brands and stuff, you know, from the off, you know, it's, it wouldn't be exciting. You know, it wouldn't be the journey that you're on. You know, we can always get better at everything that we do. We just have to to learn from the from the you know from the mistakes that we make and, and just be positive. Um, and it will always pay off in the end, or I hope. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's definitely that doubt that creeps in, and that's really part of it, that uncertainty. But you have to keep pushing through it, and yeah, hopefully in the end it works out. Hopefully. And what impact would you like to have on the world before you die? Huh. Um, it's quite a hard question, really, isn't it? Um, what impact? Like from a Bjorgen point of view, I'd love obviously for the brand to live on, and you know, you've got all the big the big boys out there, you know, the Adidas's and the the Nike. Those brands will will live on and live on and live on. So I, I'd love that to happen. Um, but I think the biggest thing that I really want in life at the moment is just my little little daughter she's only eight months old but i really want her to be proud of what i'm doing and, and and proud of her daddy that that would mean everything to me um and also just if i can make a difference to 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 anyone that, that would that's for me that's fantastic could even just be one keeper you know i made a made a difference uh there's a young goalkeeper for selwyn uh, recently that really wanted to meet uh pt or peter taco um so we arranged for him to to get his gloves delivered with Peter and get a photo and meet him and everything. And to me, that was, that was fantastic. And, and fair play to Peter to stick his hand straight up and say, yeah, I'd love to do that. It was, um, it was, uh, it was, it was, it was awesome. And that was the moment of, you know, if you can make a difference to one person, one, one child, one, one, one adult keeper, then, you know, to me, that's, 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 that's fantastic. That's what I'd like. Yeah. I think that's an awesome message. It's not about really changing the world on a global scale. It's really, those small things and finding happiness in those small things. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's hard to change the world. We need, uh, you need a lot of people, uh, with the same message. It's very hard for an individual to do it, but you know, but good on them for trying. I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Just focusing on what you can control. Cause that, that's where I find I, my happiness personally. So. Yeah, I agree. I agree. All right. I think that's a great message to end this podcast on. James, thank you so much for your time. And no I hope thank everyone you. else thank enjoyed you. it. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. Thanks very much. And yeah. I hope everything goes well with your podcast. It's been fantastic. And uh, maybe I'll see you on the football pitch again soon. Just don't score. Yeah maybe... Again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe we'll see you at the, the Christchurch International Cup in July. Yes, I'm looking forward to that. It's going to be fantastic. Thanks for the invite. Yeah. All right. See you then. Take care. Cheers. Bye-bye.